purposes because this is when they're children this is a card that can be well played they're gonna play it well based upon what you said yesterday they're gonna play it mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna play it pretty hard they're gonna play this card mm -hmm. and they're gonna play it and we would need to know a person would need to know that they can't expect it to necessarily turn out that it's going to be fair. They just have to hold their ground and be the best they can for that child and try to hold on to that relationship. Is that kind of the way they need to approach it? What do you recommend you know, if like, somebody's approaching this? The first thing to do is make sure you get a lawyer and, and a lawyer that understands it. It may, if you're already past the divorce or if you're going okay. into the divorce, you haven't hired them, make mm -hmm. sure that they have, you know, some kind of inkling of this. Um, because again, if they don't know what it is, they can't fight it and they can't defend it. Um, they've probably seen it before, didn't have a name to them. So they're just not really, you know, able to help you. Um, the next thing you want to do is get support for you because you are going to be an emotional potato. Uh, what did we say yesterday? <laughs> yeah, no, that was it. Potato. No, no abandonment potato. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, but I like this one too. Emotional potato. I wrote, I got the abandoned potato right here. I'm you're gonna. This is my new note. You're just okay. gonna be a mess because of the emotions. You know, you're going to go through like fear and stress and anxiety and insecurity and helplessness and confusion and conflict and guilt and who's gonna help you with that? If you don't make sure you are as strong as you can then you're going to, to react differently when this is happening and you could make mistakes that are, you know, could be used against you. Um, so get that help and get that thing. There's so many support groups on, on Facebook. There's so many live ones. Go on meetup.com and search for, you know, this kind of help and get other people. Um, get your child to a child psychologist if you can. Oh. Great idea. Um, because mm -hmm. this is going to help you, especially if they need a report that would be brought to the, the judge that this is part, this could be part, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but mm -hmm. if you're showing, Correct. hey, this is what's going on with the kid and, and you can actually like give a, a report from a psychologist, the judge is going to take a lot more weight with that than, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the claims and the behaviors that you're seeing. So get that child psychologist. Now, mm. that said, okay. remember mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily, unless you've got joint legal, if you've got joint legal custody of this to saying afterwards, um, mm. you might not have the option to say, I want my kid to go to therapy. So that could even have to be court ordered because if the narcissist says, hey, I got 50% and I don't want my kid to go to therapy, um, then you might have a battle. But that is showing us exactly why you need to put a lot stronger guidelines down in that original decree so that, you know, child's, you know, well-being and doctors and braces and, and, and therapists. And, need and, to and therapists. Okay. They should not be able to veto that. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So Okay, so... So at least laying the groundwork to be able to take the child to a therapist or a child psychologist in the divorce decree leaves room um, for you to be able to protect yourself to a measured degree if parental alienation comes up. Because you're saying, you're saying the course, this is not like a common thing for them to really look at it or it could oh, depend no, on the judge that day it depends on the prosecutor what there, what there is is something called um you know physical custody and legal mm -hmm. custody mm -hmm. legal mm -hmm. custody right. is where they're going to go to school what doctors they're right right do, right if they need surgery dropping them off back and forth all that kind of stuff you know all that stuff so that legal custody is generally 50 50 like unless yeah. you have some mm -hmm. real reason and evidence right, right. they know um so therefore you, they've got to agree. 50-50 right? is like, I want the kids to get into therapy. And they go, no, I don't see it. You're making it up. You're just yeah. like munchausening them and making them sick. They're really not, right? And right, so right. a lot of that is where you'll find the, the, the kickback. And if it's not, it, it's just the normal, it's part of the legal custody part, um, then you do have a battle. If you mm -hmm. want to, you might have to go back to court, right? So. And, and so... If we don't do the work ahead of time, we're asking for trouble. 
because just they're going to give us trouble anyway. I was going to say, because they're, they're laying in wait to do it. Oh, yeah. And we can't be thinking, a person can't be thinking, audience, keep this in mind with Tracy's highlighting here with these tips and strategies. This is not like you just sit there and go like, well, that's not going to happen. I don't think they'll do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they'd done the do, if they'd done double dirt, triple dirt before, it, it's just going to get worse. It's so crazy. put it in the divorce decree plan, re, pre-plan for a problem. Absolutely. The parenting plan would be something that that would maybe elaborate on. Okay. You know, you could have a, a psychology paragraph that, you know, sort of defines that if either parent wants okay. this, that Got it. stop it. Um, because that's, again, that takes separates it out from the whole legal custody umbrella. Just to have well, that. Well, if the, the narc wanted to isolate the partner, the wife or the husband, they're going to want to do the same with the child. They didn't want the partner to go get help. They're going to do their best to make sure the child doesn't go to a child psychologist. Absolutely. So put it in a decree. At least you can protect the child because you didn't have it in your marriage decree. So, so yeah. you're like, if I want to go, he can't stop me or she can't stop. Well, now you can do it. You can literally protect the child that way by having it written out that no one can stop if the child needs therapy. Yeah. Because it's the child not as easy as just having it written out. You, you're going to have to fight like a war for it because they're not going to like it. Yeah. So you hey, can stand, stand your ground. Yeah, yeah that's right. Battling, yeah. And then you would actually be showing the court reasons for why you want that paragraph in there sir here's where she's saying I, I don't want therapy for the kid and you know this is the evidence that would get the judge to go no you're being a jerk i'm putting it in right yeah even right. though they're resisting it right a lot of these details can be worked out in uh, mediation but not with a narcissist on a general basis <laughs> not, not not just like a one-on-one -on -one. you're gonna have this phone discussion yeah, no. it's going to be ridiculous. Mediation, at least going in the mediation route is what you're saying. Get some type of legal support through the court system or mediation to be able to bring it up, because that's the most reasonable thing. Even if it's just like, hey, you know what? My daughter or son's going to be a child of divorce. I want to make sure they at least have access to a therapist that's so amazing. that they can have a well-balanced future going ahead and know that they're not to blame of what's going on right now. I just made that up. Don't find don't you guys don't listen to me. You know, I have no I'm just she's the expert, everybody. Okay, it's not me. Okay, so I just make this stuff up. Coming to you from a secure basement somewhere in Southern California. So don't don't mind me. I'm just being so all right. So what I'm gonna what I do wanna highlight is more things. Can I show you tell you some more yes. things? Can, I want you to do that. Do me a huge favor. Um, you're getting some love on the screen and I cannot ignore it because when it starts scrolling, then I gotta back scroll. So I just gotta do this real quick. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I forgot your name, but sexy. I'm sorry. I hate to say that. Uh, it says, good morning to you. And, uh, she's highlighting, you told me your name yesterday and I apologize to you. She says that she's dealing with this right now, what we're discussing. Uh, we had a parenting plan and still not working. Uh, what do you do? Good advice. She's telling, telling you. And Alessandro has been on, uh, and saying great advice as well. And a number of other things. Uh, I'm not ignoring you guys. Uh, thank you. Leola, thank you for telling me that. Um, please tell us some more, Tracy, that you had. Everybody, we'll get to you. I'm not ignoring you. I, I, you know I don't do that on this channel, but I really wanted to maximize this time with Tracy. Uh, go ahead. Feel free to put your comments in, though. Okay. So, so when we are faced with that question of should I keep reaching out to my kids mm -hmm. if they've already been alienated and they don't want to come back to you and that sort of thing, right? Um, should I continue to show up? Should I send those birthday cards? Should right. I call them on, on Christmas? You know, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and, and the answer is absolutely hands down. Yes. Right. Um, keep the communication going with the child, whether you know whether they're getting it or not, or whatever the case may be, keep that stream of, it, of communication going with the child. That effort is what you're saying. And, okay. and if you look at my friend whose child came back, um, she said, even though we weren't allowed to open the cards and the presents that mom sent and they throw them out in front of us, knowing that she was still there kind of comforted her. Um, mm -hmm. And again, for so many years, so I think it was like six years she was gone. Um, she wow. just was forced to hate her mother. So wow. yet these things would arrive and she would be like, oh, okay. So when the door came where she said, this isn't right, 
she knew mom would always be there. Had she gone dark for seven years and not spoken on it all over right, the country, right, right. Um, yeah. you know, it would have it would have been a different thing. But I think until they slap a restraining order on you to not do that anymore, <laughs> yeah. just keep on reaching out to them, keep on making them be a part did of she, your life. Did she have Did she have that happen to her? The restraining order. The no, restraining order. Another friend who. No, the other friend. Okay. Who has the YouTube channel? No, uh, no, that's, that's somebody different. Okay, number three friend. Yeah, okay. I have a lot of All friends right. with this because yeah. so, so hey, I just got to ask real quick. So, just in case, I don't think nobody's bringing it up on the screen, I don't see over here, but I've just got to ask what if the restraining order happens? Is there a you know, just off the top of your head well, before then, you then, get to your next one? Absolutely, do not contact them. Yeah, okay, now well, you're well, going that? to go to jail for it. Yo, yeah, yeah, and, sure. and that's yeah. that's the significant threat that's involved in that. Um, and so, yeah, you have to take that really seriously. Okay. All right. Uh, the other points you had, um, everybody's telling you great advice. Uh, children need support for their emotional development. And, uh, and I get support emotional, uh, I get the most uh, support emotional development, uh, the good, uh, they're happy with everything. Go right ahead. You were saying, so please. If you are not in a situation where the divorce is final, and you know when divorcing a narcissist is like rarely less than a year um it's just always a battle really so, yeah so your opportunity to document everything is key to to doing this so document don't be like you know that the kids said this and this and that um write it down put it in a in a, in a document that okay. is sort of unjournalesque, if you would Journaling is good and it's helpful for you, but this is a court thing that we want to say on this date, you know, this is what happened. It's more okay. documentation and okay. not in story form because no judge is going to read that. But yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. There could be attached texts and things like that that could be supplement, you know, to that bullet point. You know, I've got a text and it's, it's connected here and, and they can see it if they need to, right? So document everything because. If you don't have documentation, you don't have a case. And having that documentation of what they're doing, what you've heard, what you've said, um, and heard said by the kids is gonna be your salvation to the courts, but it's also hearsay. So it's important, but it's also, don't think it's gold and go, right. I'm documenting every sentence he says and nobody cares. Expect that nobody will care. And again, 80% of the documentation that we gather will never be used. But if we only need that 20% and we didn't document all of it, yeah. then the, the judge and your lawyers, the lawyers are going to decide what's important from your documentation. So yeah. put it all down and then, yeah. yes, you'll have to pay them to read it all, but they'll go, these five are what matter. And right. that's going to make the difference in your case. So document the well, heck. It, yeah, you might as well, like you're saying, just document it to death because you're going to have to have a legacy if something happens to you that your child will be able to go back and go like, hey, look, my mom or my dad was really trying to communicate with the court, with dad or mom, and with me. And it really, it really stands well that they are able to see that. But the lawyers, like you said, they get to choose or the judge. But it's better to document everything but not put it in a journal format like you're writing well, a story. Write it in your journal. Thing. Do your journal thing too. <laughs> yeah, get it out of your system so you can you can be emotionally stoic uh, as you go to go into court, and you're not going to want to jump across the table and choke nobody because you don't want that <laughs> happen. That that's not going to be good. <laughs> you may want to, but don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I know. Well, I, can I tell you a confession? It's in the book. Um, on my stand when I was on is the this, stand. Is this going to be really bad? <laughs> no, it was okay. just like okay. Okay, oh, okay. go just, ahead. Uh, it was a, a moment. And I was so pissed off and they were, his, his lawyer was attacking me on the stand and yelling at me. And, and I literally sat there and I just kind of went like this. I'm scratching my finger, giving the finger my face. I'm just like, Wait. and the, his lawyer went ballistic. I'm like, I'm scratching my face, judge. And the judge was like, don't do that anymore. Because I was so pissed off. And I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it sure felt good at that <laughs> you got You're like, I'm getting this out of my system in some kind of way. You Look at you. Want to punch him in the face. That was better than punching. I kidding. am just appalled that you did such a thing. I know. <laughs> I know. It sucks to be human. Trace the end. Yeah. All right. But anyhow, so those moments can happen. But whatever you do, 
do not leap across the table and try to choke somebody. That's <laughs> going to be really not, okay. Absolutely not. But uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, somebody is writing here. Uh, Le Leola is writing. Amen. I do document important. I learned in my class that she took. Uh, she mentioned that she learned to do so. Uh, the documentation, then, what you're saying, even as she's highlighting and supporting you on that, is is vital. Um, so I imagine too many people who don't know this. They walk in there and don't. They, they never documented or they documented very little or they journaled it and the judge is not going to sit there and be trying to interpret. He wants bullet points and connect the dots and so he can keep moving on. But let's go back to their emotional state when this is happening. You're living okay. in fear. You're living in anxiety. You're, you're depressed. Okay. Like you, yeah. you're hopeless. Then you want me to document what? You're so yeah, right. low. You're yeah. low with the covers over your head. Yeah. You're don't see the value in that yeah. because it's coming at you in rapid fire and you yeah. shut down, right? It's when we have the opportunity to mm -hmm. um, open up and put it in there and, and try to get out from under the covers to document. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the hardest part is, is to like go, I want to be doing something else. Yeah. But um, seeing the long-term benefit of documentation is going to help though, because uh, there will be a clear record that the innocent person is not instigating anything. They're mm -hmm. trying to resolve something. Um, they're not just reacting. They're really trying to have a response to, uh, so that the child can be safe and they can be safe. So right. thank you so much for highlighting that. Everybody truly appreciated what you're mentioning there. You had some other points that you wanted to highlight to us before you have to go today? Sure, sure. So, so we want to make sure that our children's needs are the top priority. Um, despite how they act to you, because a child can come home and tell okay, you. Okay, you did it again. No, nope, you did it again. You got to repeat that. No, you did it. No matter how they act to you. Okay, that hits to all the guys that write me, and you gentlemen know who you are. I tell you exactly what Tracy said, but I love the way she said it better. No matter how they respond or react to you, their needs have to be top priority not our reaction to the narcissist. And, and that's the thing is you're sitting here and you're seeing sometimes a little clone of your narcissist. Oh, and they come home and they're one. doing the exact uh, same thing and you uh, get triggered and yeah, you want yeah. to go, well, let me tell you. Uh, right? Yeah, right, they right, right, right. You speak because if you say the wrong things to them, it's going to react, you know, your daddy isn't right about that. Whatever they said isn't true. And all mm -hmm. of that defense is not the child's to carry, right? It's, too, it, it's hard for us to walk away from the, the cruel and terrible things that they're doing to us. But at the same time, if we don't take their needs in, and then we are equally exposing them to things that they have no right or reason to know. Um, so almost taking the high road, if, if okay. you can, especially when it comes to how you react to the kids, because yeah. it hurts. It hurts so much for all of you who are out there in TV land. Um, it is one of the most painful things in your entire yeah. life. If we thought divorcing a narcissist or co-parenting was with them, when they take your child or make false allegation that you sexually abused your daughter, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a battle that, that like it takes everything out of your soul. Like, you know you loved your daughter, and, mm -hmm. and now you're being accused of loving mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you even recover from that? You are so depressed. You are so in battle mode. But if the children well, pick that up, yeah. it's bad for them. The, the core strength of, of a parent, of a mom or dad, and is taking care of their child. Uh, you know, a good parent is trying to do that. And to have that, that's like the last vested to be attacked <laughs> it's like you know people get upset if they go to a pta meeting and somebody says hey you know what you're not that great of a parent they're ready to fight but if it's if it's somebody that has lived with you day in and day out mm -hmm. and they now are going to say that you're this horrible person mm -hmm. there needs to be a parenting plan and documentation the person needs to be careful because they're going to be accused falsely and you're saying it it is not like a 20 percent chance this is something they are openly willing to play oh, that yeah. card. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you know, again, to a divorce, to a narcissist divorce is a game. And this is just like one more way to dig the knife in. 
right? Whether it's financially abusing you or mm -hmm. again, yeah. we talked right. about yesterday, mm -hmm. this part about taking the kids in and making them into weapons against you. You know, think crazy. about that. That's just crazy. Yeah. Um, it, when it, when it, you have a number of either friends or experiences you've heard in which people have been successful to navigate through this, but it, it, it wasn't easy, right? Well, it's, it's, it's the fight and the battle that you have the opportunity. Once it's said and done and you're okay. granted no custody of your children, um, yeah. it's, that's the harder battle. And that's what all three of my friends have had to deal with for so many years. Um, what do you do then? Um, how do yeah. you live your life? Right never going to your kid's high school graduation or seeing them get drunk. Right, right, um, right. It hurts so much. So, yeah. Yeah. I've seen the, the other end of the spectrum from a number of different people. I'm thinking of a, a, a lady that wrote me, and she finally had, as you kind of touched on earlier, the child became an adult. And then the child, well, the adult began to remember what the child actually saw mm. because they went to therapy, the, uh, the adult, her daughter went to therapy. Mm -hmm. The daughter went to therapy and started to unlock all the lies, the, the way she was manipulated or uh, um, threatened mm -hmm. uh, to do certain things. Um, none of that came out when they were a child though. No. But she remembered it all. Because we when she went to her. therapy and she went to her mom and apologized and the mom was like, the lady that wrote me was like, she, she couldn't be mad at her daughter. She, she knew what was going on, but I don't know, nine, nine, ten years or, or eight, nine years. She didn't, no custody of her daughter. Supervised visit. Oh, yeah. That's she was in it. Wait, she was innocent the whole time, Tracy. I know. Of course. I mean, you would know this, but I, to me, it was like, I can't believe people do that. Crazy. It's Took hard. her daughter away from her, but yeah. they connected. They're friends. They're locked in. Didn't invite dad to the, dad to the wedding, mom to the wedding. She had a friend stand in. Uh, for for her her dad's play. Yep, she was. She, the daughter went full board. She went. Good. She never let this happen again. And now the mom, of course, grant. She's a grandparent. Uh, her story was a really beautiful story. Uh, I can't say the person's name, but a really beautiful story. Grandparent now, he gets to now, as it were, li live watching and taking care of her grandchildren. Missed out on some moments that she didn't get with her daughter. She gets to have them with the grandchildren now. And you made a really valid Amazing. point there because when the alienated child has that hatred for the parent, the unnatural, mm -hmm. no reason hatred for the parent. And she hated her mom too, by the way. I'm just, now that you mentioned it, she really, really hated her mom. Of course she did. He believed all the stories. She was sleeping around. He said, no, he said all kinds of stuff about her. Totally not true. Absolutely. And, and what happens too is not only is the child alienated from mom or dad in this case, right? Mm -hmm. They're alienated from the grandparents, aunts, uncles, and grandparents. Oh, yeah, that's true. Side. They are the yeah. parents have to deal with this. That What did we do? And, and they're and, stuck like, yeah, what legal, there's too much legal stuff that they could do if none. None. There's nothing. Uh, unless the, the alienated, the alienator, sorry, um, mm -hmm. is actually doing physical abuse or something. They can, they can grandparents, yeah. Parents, you know, I've had grandparents go see. after it. I've had get. Oh, I've heard that too, yeah. yeah. But it it doesn't really work well because no. um, the courts it, are going to side with the parent, yeah. yeah, the biological parent, yeah. Right. It's it's a, and it, and again, if if mom doesn't have custody anymore, well, that means that her grandparent, her her parents don't either. No. You know, no. it's just the way the uncles, court cousins, works. the whole, the whole, the whole, and their then, her whole life that, legacy is is chopped off. Think about what that does to the kid. Like mm -hmm. maybe you had five cousins on that side and mm -hmm. then for the mm -hmm. next 10 years, you will never see them again. They're never going to come back into your life, at least the way that you should have if you all go on vacation or Thanksgivings together, right? It's gone. You That's can't why this back. behavior is evil. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> it's my channel. I can say it. This is, no, literally to me, it is like evil to, yes. to create these scenarios that you put a human being in, a young person, a human being in. Uh, I have to touch on a few things here um, uh, before we get to something in a little bit. Everybody's agreeing with you. Uh, Victor says, the mother accused my son that he abused his sister to manipulate my son. Okay, that's just crazy mm -hmm. that she would do such a thing. Um, your easy life, Eve, uh, a great guest that I had on the show here, 
she uh, mentions here, I have known this happen. This happens so much. Um, th this is a common situation that has, as you said at the very beginning, there's no easy answer. It's a path that someone has to walk, and they have to get as many resources. I, <laughs> Tracy, you did it to me again. I, I got so many sheets uh, of, of notes that I, I've taken. Um, the class has been in when they, uh, uh, Tracy is on the show. Did I call you Tracy? I don't know if I just did. Please forgive me. Um, support group. You mentioned a good lawyer. Staying emotionally balanced, as it were. A child psychologist. Uh, keep the communication going. I tried to put down as much as I could that you were highlighting. But we can't beat ourselves up, or a person can't, if they were in a situation that they were fearful and they didn't have good documentation. They can just only do the best they can in the moment that they can. And again, with the right legal team, with the people that can actually, okay. like, know what to do with that evidence, you know, okay. um, you never know. It's, 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 it's like a swap machine. Yeah. Really you, could, you could do the work, but it doesn't mean that it's going to, it's going to knock it out the ballpark. They may say, uh, hey. Uh, proving what they're doing is going to be key. And, okay. you know, just understanding it and showing the behaviors. We're not calling it that because we established that at the beginning that yeah, yeah, we yeah. don't think about right, this. Right, right. Yeah. It's actually not a syndrome. We can't go. They're doing this, right? But they, we can see that they're isolating the child. They're not letting the child talk to the other parent when they're in their house. They're taking away their phone to stop the communication. Those are the things that judge is going to care about. And those are the things we gather evidence on and say, you know, I'm supposed to talk to them when they're at the other parent's house once a time that they're there and I'm not being allowed to. That a judge is going to be pissed off about. So those are the kind of things you want to gather. And again, it's luck of the job. Will that judge care? Yeah, right, they, right. But it's also on the performance of the narcissist. And I've heard this a lot where they're so oh. arrogant in the courtroom that the judge is oh. like, you know what? No, okay. no, 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 you know, so I didn't think of that. Okay. Bury themselves. They're so like, they, they protest too much. And so <laughs> okay. the judge goes, That's a a good one. And, they, yeah. and, you know, but again, good lawyer, good judges, bad judges. And, you know, in, I would say, I'm not going to say this in a mad, bad way, but in more royal, royal, uh, rural communities that really hurt to get out. Um, the judges are just not as educated. You know, you might find more. I never thought of that. Wow. If you're in a big city, like let's use Denver as an example, you're in Denver and they're going through so many in a court. Oh, okay. Two divorces. They're exposed to it a month. And, and so this is so uncommon that they don't even know what to do with it, much less, again, when you've got a system that is bringing the, the divorces in as rapid fire, they've, the judge has got more exposure. I've seen this before and, and they can do something like that. A book like this, which I showed, I held up yes. before. Yeah, uh -huh. um, right. This sort of thing, children. Something you can send to your lawyer. Uh. Uh, you, it's this small. It's the tiniest little book. It, it's 40 pages, 51. Yeah. Send it to your lawyer so that they understand it. And this is for professionals. This is designed for the wow. lawyers and for therapists okay. who are treating people with this. So... Put it to your lawyer and be like, it's a $9 book. Here you go. There you you go. know, and it's only 70, 50 pages. You can do it in an hour. It'll only yeah. cost me $400. Hey, get it, time. get his staff or get somebody else there to read it and, and make case notes for you or something like that. Exactly. Uh, if you need to know more about the book, of course, do not write me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. You can always DM uh, uh, Tracy. Uh, you can always uh, ask uh, her uh, some more tips and strategies. But the bottom line is, the more you know, based upon what you're saying, every situation can be fluid, depending. There's so many variables and people that come into play when this starts to take place. You're going to have to rely on other people and their choices and decisions, but you can provide them with as much information and documentation as possible that you can, and then just see what takes place. But the outcome is always going to be the best in the long run for the child. Uh, it will work itself out one way or the other. Um, it always does. Every story that I hear this about, it's, tr it's, it's difficult living with the narcissist. It can be tragic when they use the parental alienation. But the bottom line is, uh, the child is going to have the last say. 
uh, they're going to figure it out once they see who has the better pattern uh, of telling but, the truth. Know, the, one, of, one of the tactics that the, the alienator uses is uh -huh. promises. Again, future faking, future casting, as we talked about yesterday, yesterday. where mm -hmm. you are, I'll pay for your education, but you know, your mom doesn't want you to go to school. So oh, wow. you better stick with me or I'll wow. buy you a car if yeah. you don't ever drive yeah. it to daddy's, meaning, okay, then I'm not going to go to daddy's anymore. They also will pull a, a, a tactic when they're alienating the child. Like if this is not their weekend, they mm -hmm. will call the child and go, I just got like, you know, some famous artist tickets. For oh, tickets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you want to do? Kids? Wow. And the kid is in a position to go, I get to see my favorite artist and bring a friend. That's crazy. Or I'm supposed to be with mom. They don't understand that legally you're supposed to be with mom. So now right. the kid's heart is being tugged going, why won't you let me go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, whoever it is. <sighs> it's, it's manipulation using stuff in those cases, right? So it's education, it's cars, and it's tickets to shows and things. Yeah. But only if you don't go to mommy or daddy's. Or if you leave there and come be with me. Because they're using the child, like you said, from your book. And again, I go back to the, the picture illustration you had that's in your, your new book. It's, it's just another pawn on the, on the chess piece. Uh, chess, chess, in the chess game, it's another pawn that they're using. Right? They, they truly don't care about the child. Children are extensions of a narcissist to make them look good. And if you don't make them look good, then it's not conditional love. And they, they show it. Wow. We, we got uh, here on the screen, uh, Brent is saying, I have to deal with this from my ex on a regular basis. Uh, Brent, was my, uh, Brent is my, tell you this, Tracy, I started this uh, part every, uh, on Sundays, I should say, in which I have a mom that's either nominated or I choose to highlight a mom that's doing good. And it's the mom of the day kind of show, best mom ever show. And she was the first one. And so she's saying, she deals with this on a regular basis. Matter of fact, um, uh, Victor's saying, I really understand what you're saying here. So just kudos to you. He wants to give you kudos that he's getting the understanding. And for me personally, uh, thank you, Britt, for that. And thank you, uh, J. Victor Flores, for that. Uh, I just want you to know the, the men are loving you. <laughs> the men are loving you. Take that any way you want to. I'm just telling you. <laughs> the men are loving you because they're understanding the way you're explaining it. That's no slight on anybody before you that's been on the show or that will be on the show. They're understanding the way you're describing everything. They're catching it. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, what men have wrote me is uh, sometimes it goes too fast for them. Uh, I don't have to interrupt you too much. Uh, we're normally on some certain shows I have to interrupt so they can understand. There's nothing wrong with the guests. It's just that the men are trying to emotionally they're kind of stuck and they kind of it's, it's just harder for them to process a certain thing. Uh, and they want to get the information to make it work for their child when it comes to this subject. But they appreciate it. I, I'm looking at it over here off, off screen. They appreciate the way you're explaining everything. I can't keep you forever. We've gone in one hour and three minutes and counting. Uh, <laughs> this is I'm the first of a June 17th music fair. And okay. It's the first actual music venue in Denver since COVID. So, really? Well, that explains uh, why you look so spiffy and gorgeous and beautiful. I thought it was for me in the show. But, anyhow, what I was going to say is <laughs> I'm just, I'm teasing you, my friend. Uh, what I'm, I do want to say is it, it is amazing the patterns that the symptoms that now I know he, uh, Jay Victor is saying, because of what you discussed this morning with us, he's understanding the patterns and the symptom, sim symptoms. Look at me. Now I've got, what am I got? I just got it from you. All right. All right. Um, um, you're going to need to go. Uh, I don't want you to, but life makes it so much better uh, if you go ahead and enjoy yourself the rest of the day and all of these people can take your advice and apply it. Uh, thank you for being an awesome two-day guest here with us a total of about uh, two and a half hours you spent uh with us i truly appreciate it everybody else does enjoy your weekend stay safe please try to stay nice and cool as much as possible but you know if you need my friends just let me know uh they come from new york so they'll, they'll, they'll drive out there they'll be out there in a heartbeat 
to take care of your air conditioning situation. You're getting thank yous across the screen. Uh, some hearts were flowing earlier. You get some more hearts here from Shay Shay and others. Uh, a few others are joining right now, but we need to go. Thank you so much, Tracy. Everybody, please. Hold on a second. You got to get this book here on my screen behind me. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. Oh, she's got the book right there. The book is behind me, too. Uh, one of the cruelest side effects of emotional abuse is the ingrained belief that we are unlovable because one person who is incapable of love of a long lasting love doesn't love us. That's a part of the advertisement that is for her book. Uh, my goodness, everybody's getting your love on the screen. Hearts. Uh, Britt is saying thanks, Tracy. Um, get the book. And how do you get the book? DM Tracy. She'll tell you more. All right. Like, comment, share. Follow yeah, like, comment, Instagram. share. Go ahead. You will I'm find sorry. on Instagram, you will find as I'm releasing it and as I'm putting out all yeah. this stuff like you've got behind you. So if you okay. find that, then you'll know all this. Okay. Videos. Everybody, do your part. Put the pizza down. Like, comment, share, follow Tracy. Tracy A. Malone. Make it happen. Um, bye, Tracy. Bye for now, everybody. Love everybody. We'll bye. see you soon. Bye. bye.